Why does marriage suck and how do you fix it? In this video, I'm gonna give you the three things that you have to have to have an awesome marriage. If you get these things, your marriage won't suck. I've worked with thousands of people in miserable marriages. They're full of resentment, anger, disgust for their partner, and they just don't wanna be in that marriage, but they're trapped and they're stuck. That doesn't have to be you. You can shift things in your marriage. Your marriage doesn't have to suck. I'm gonna give you the pitfalls that actually get you stuck in a horrible marriage, but I'm also gonna give you the three things that will help you to have an awesome marriage and really feel connection and happiness with your partner. Let's get some things out of the way first. So first off, everybody who gets married has one thing in common. They're naive enough or stupid enough to actually do it. Now, I get it, I know, I, I love marriage. I'm married myself. But the reality is, is nobody knows what you're actually getting into when you get married. Marriage is the greatest source of pain and struggle in your life and it's also the greatest source of happiness. It's a dichotomy. And through working together with somebody, you create love, you create connection, you create happiness together. But it takes work. There's a struggle there in every marriage. And if you don't know how to work through those struggles, then your marriage is gonna suck. It's gonna be miserable. There are things that make a marriage work and there are things that undermine a marriage and really get in the way. So let's break down the things that undermine a marriage. First off, one of the big things that kills marriage is resentment. Now, when you think about resentment, what is that? Resentment is added up anger, frustration. Uh, it's added up things, emotions that you haven't dealt with. And they just sit inside of you. And you blame your partner. You think it's all their fault. Now, resentment happens for two reasons. Either you haven't been honest and haven't had a boundary with your partner, or you haven't learned how to let some things go. But if you just sit in resentment, that toxic energy is gonna ruin your marriage. The second thing that ruins your marriage is blame. Playing the victim, looking at your partner and just saying it's all their fault that you're miserable. When you stay stuck in blame, you don't do the hard work to actually move forward with your spouse. So be cautious to not stay stuck in blame because if you are, that's on you. That's your fault. Another thing that kills a good marriage is assumption. Assumption that they should be a certain way. Making assumptions about things they think and things they do. A healthy marriage is about connection. It's about understanding who they actually are. So if you're making up in your mind who they actually are, then you're actually setting yourself up. Now going along with assumption, expectation is also something that will destroy a good marriage. Expectations are premeditated resentments. You're looking at your partner and you're saying, I want something from you, so you better give this to me in the future. That's what needs to happen. Let go of expectations. If you let go of expectations, you can meet your partner where they're at and actually connect to them. I guarantee you that your marriage will suck if you're dishonest and if your partner's dishonest too. You won't have trust. You won't have a foundation of safety in your marriage. Dishonesty destroys marriage. So making a commitment to be an integrous person full of honesty is important if you want a good marriage. It's so interesting to me as a therapist. I'll have couples come in and they'll say that they'll say they want happiness in their marriage. And then they'll get talking about what's going on at home. They'll be sarcastic, they'll be rude, they'll be cutting, they'll be full of resentment and blame. And then they'll turn to me and they'll, they'll say, help us be happy. We wanna be happy as a couple together. And I look at that and I think, how are, you, how are you expecting to be happy when this is the energy that you're bringing to the relationship? You feel all of these things, you feel so justified in your blame and your resentment and you're pointing the finger at them saying, you better change so we can be happy. The reality is, is both partners need to be committed to shifting individually so that they can create something different together. 
All right, I'm gonna break down for you the good stuff that actually works so that your marriage doesn't suck. But before I do, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you want a good marriage, you have to have trust. There's no way around it. So if trust is not doing good in your relationship, then you're gonna to need to start there. Look at that, why is trust breaking down? Now before you think about your partner and you say, well, they're a liar, they did this, they, they do that, think about yourself first. How are you not a trustworthy partner? How are you not showing up in integrity in your relationship? If you look at what you're doing, that's what's in your control. So focus on those things for you. Really consider what it would take to start to build trust again in your relationship. I was talking to my brother the other day. Now my brother is an amazing therapist too. He does a ton of therapy. And we were just having a conversation and I said to him, why do some couples make it and some couples thrive and love each other and other couples don't? Other couples stay stuck and miserable or divorced. What's like the ingredient? What's the thing? And he stopped for a minute and he was thinking about it. He works with a lot of couples and he does a lot of specific couples therapy and teaches couples how to connect and be happy. But he said this to me, he said, this is the one thing that people need to be happy. They need to have an ability to self-reflect. So think about that. If I want a healthy marriage, I need an ability for myself to self-reflect, to look at, is it I? What about me is creating these things? It can be really difficult to self-reflect in marriage because it's so easy to focus on the pain points. And when you look at the pain points, you see, well, they're causing this, they're doing this, it's their fault. But when you self-reflect, you can actually assert your power in getting better, in working on yourself, in showing up with more integrity. Marriage takes commitment. There's, I promise you there's gonna be hard stuff that comes into your marriage, I promise you. And at times it's gonna feel like it sucks. But a good, healthy marriage that doesn't suck is one where both partners are willing to step into the hard stuff and to do it again and again. It's a commitment thing. It's not something that you bail on easy or just disconnect or isolate or shut down because it's too hard to work through the hard things with your spouse. When there is something between you, instead of sweeping it under the rug, avoiding it, actually learn how to step into it with them. As you work through those hard things, you're gonna feel more connection. Everything is an opportunity for connection. Every discomfort, every conflict. Or you can end up disconnected and angry at each other. It's, it's your choice. Just last week, my wife was bothered about something uh, and I didn't know what, exactly what it was. So, but I could tell, I could feel it from her that something was off. And so I found the right time. I sat down with her and I said, what's going on? Tell me what's happening. And she said, you've just felt so aloof. You've felt so disconnected and unhelpful around the house. Now think about that. In the moment, uh, it could feel like she's attacking me. That she's saying, you suck as a husband. But in that moment, I have an opportunity to either connect to her or disconnect from her. She's opening up to me and saying, I don't feel supported. I don't feel loved. I don't feel like you're there with me. And so I listened to her, I validated how she felt, I owned my part in what I was doing, and I tried to understand why she was feeling the way she was feeling. At the end of that, she gave me a big hug. We were totally connected, and she felt empathized with. Now think about that example. I could have turned it into a big fight, a big disconnect. I could have resented her and blamed her. Instead, we felt love together. A really good marriage is not one that you're totally connected on everything. In fact, that's a problem. That's what I call enmeshment or codependency. You're overly connected. You don't have an opinion of your own. You, you try to formulate your opinion to be the same as your partner's. That's not healthy. A marriage that doesn't suck is a marriage that has individuality. I like to call it interdependency, where each individual shows up to that relationship, is honest, is boundaried, is vulnerable in their authenticity. A healthy marriage is not about agreement. 
A healthy marriage is about understanding and empowerment. So you don't have to agree on everything. The more you feel empowered as an individual, the happier you're gonna be in your marriage. One last thing that's very important is respect. If you don't have respect, you're not gonna have safety. If there's violence, if there's name calling, sarcasm, abuse, that's obviously gonna to lead to a bad marriage. So both of you be committed to respecting each other, to being kind, being patient, and getting curious with each other, but have respect. There's all different kinds of marriages. I've met people who are so happy together and so in love, even after years of marriage. And I've met people who have been married for years and years and so miserable and so unhappy. The reality is, is it does take two. A happy marriage takes two individuals. But if both individuals are willing to self-reflect, willing to be curious with each other, be patient, have respect, then you can be happy in your marriage. If this video has been helpful about your marriage not sucking, then check out my other video, The Four Biggest Reasons You Lack Passion in Your Marriage, and I'll go more in depth there about the things that you can do to not be in a miserable marriage.